So uh, it's been a while since I've since I've posted anything here since I've done some videos, but just so happens last night I was I was walking out of uh, my baseball practice. Yes, I coach baseball, and I'm just you know checking checking one's phone as you would, and I get breaking news um, that Devontae Adams, the Green Bay Packers, decided to trade him to the Las Vegas Raiders for a couple prime picks, which have now since been described as first and second round picks this year, which, okay, but uh, as a Packers fan, my first thought upon seeing this was, what, what, what are, what are we doing? What are we, yes, because I'm one of those guys, we, fan, like I live and die with the Green Bay Packers, like that is, I like all sports, my fandom for the Green Bay Packers is by far my biggest. But what are we doing? Because um, here's the scenario. Now, Aaron Rodgers, you get him to come back. And the big thing here was uh, a lot of people talking heads, especially people that absolutely hate Aaron Rodgers, uh, he, talking about how he was being greedy. And now look at this is this is what it got you. Devontae Adams, your best receiver, is gone because you're greedy. Again, this upcoming year, uh, for Aaron Rodgers, he is like 19th in terms of cap hit. His cap hit is like $21 million. He signed four years, 160 mil, 40 mil a year, two-time reigning MVP, worth it. Going to be honest with you, probably not going to play all four years. So when he really gets on to that back end where the cap hits huge, he's probably going to be retired at that point, I would imagine. I, I think that Aaron Rodgers has maybe two years left retire I think not because he's not going to physically be able to play but I think that's when he's going to retire hell now after this year it might be one and done he might retire after this year because Devontae Adams best receiver the Packers had best receiver in the NFL if not the best definitely in the top three I personally think he's the best but I was a homer up until yesterday because now he's no longer a Packer but what 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 do they have now so, like, they re-signed Alan Lazard. Great. Right now, today, March 18th, and I'm sure it's not going to stay like this, but March 18th, Alan Lazard is the Green Bay Packers' number one receiver. Number one. He is our number one guy. Like Lazard, but if we're being honest, he is at best, at best, a number three on another good team, like with a good receiving core. Maybe number four. Like if you threw him, um, he'd be like the number three in Buffalo. He'd be, as it's constructed right now, he'd be the number four for the Rams, maybe. Like it's he's not a number one. He's not even a number two. Like And I think they proved that. All these other guys, their number twos that they had, MVS, Alan Lazard, like no one was a consistent number two, right? It wasn't, oh, Devontae Adams is taking, you know, a lot of shine or a lot of attention. So this guy's going to eat. Perfect example, still a free agent out there, a potential replacement or a potential guy that the Packers might go after. Juju Smith-Schuster, when he was a rookie, right? I think Juju has proven that he's not a number one receiver, but he had, what, 1,200 yards, double-digit touchdowns, something like that his rookie year because the number one guy taking a bunch of attention was Antonio Brown. And Juju Smith-Schuster is a number two, a legit number two. Uh, Alan Lazard's not that. Now, right now, he's our number one. He's our number one. Uh, so as Packer, as a Packers fan, it is devastating. It is devastating. You get your quarterback back for a year. I never really thought he was going elsewhere, but I thought it was a strong possibility he could retire. Or I thought if he came back, maybe it was going to be, hey, let's saddle up. Let's go after it for, you know, one more year and let's try to win a Super Bowl and then I'm gone. Not the case because <laughs> right now, what are, the, what are they going to win? They might win the North, might win the North. I mean, they're receiving core. Like, who is he throwing the ball to? Who's, like, who, who, who is there? Uh, and Randall Cobb, I mean, I love Randall Cobb. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. And at one point, Randall Cobb was like the Debo Samuel. He was this just gadget. You can line him up in the backfield. He, he was that guy when he was younger in his prime. 
I thought, and I've said it in videos on this channel, I thought Randall Cobb, when they let go of him three years ago, I thought it was the right move because Randall Cobb just, he was getting hurt, wasn't as explosive, didn't have it like he used to. Thought it was a perfect example why pay him 10 million, he wasn't worth it at that point. The guy, I mean, you're paying him one or two mil, but not what he used to be, not even close. So what do we have? So we got some free agent options, right? The, the best guys out there, Allen Robinson just signed with the Rams. He's gone. Juju Smith, uh, Schuster, again, number two. Uh, I really, again, there were some guys that I would have loved to have seen the Packers sign to pair with Devontae. Perfect example. Uh, well, Juju would have been a good one, again, really good number two. Julio Jones, uh, if he could have stayed healthy. He's a shell of what he used to be, but a number two. Uh, he definitely could have had a somewhat resurgent for Green Bay, but you sign him now, he would have to be your number one, and he's not that anymore. I would have loved, and I still would really enjoy if they signed Jarvis Landry, because uh, he's still he's still very good at what he does. Um, he's that same draft class with Devontae Adams, uh, Odell. He's got some years left in him. He's, he can still do some things, still quick, catches the ball, uh, can get open, good route runner. But again... He's another guy that would have paired really well with Devante. Um, here he would have to show up and be like a, a number one. And I don't really think he's a number one receiver. Um, but he's more of a number one than Juju. But I would like to see him. Um, so it, it's tough. It, this is not, you can't replace Devonte Adams. You can't do it with one guy. It's going to need to be a combination. So as a Packers fan, I would love to see them sign a, a free agent. Um, Jarvis, I think, would be my number one option. If they could get Jarvis Landry in there, I think that would be a really good option. With one of these first-round picks, you need to take a receiver, whether it be Chris Olave from Ohio State, Traylon Burks, whoever's around at that at that point. Um, if Jamison Williams, one of those guys, falls, like you need to draft a receiver. Now, granted, we, the NFL has been blessed with these rookies that come in and are just absolute superstars the last couple of years, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. I don't think anybody, and hell, even CeeDee Lamb, I don't think anybody in this draft class is those guys. I don't think Garrett Wilson. I don't think Olave. I don't think Burks. I don't think uh, maybe Jamison Williams before he got hurt because his game's really predicated on explosiveness. So once you you know blow out an ACL, not really sure if you're going to be that athlete anymore. I mean, you could be, but like how long do you have? Really, you, you blow out an ACL, potentially you might be on, you know, Borrowed time, so maybe he could be that athlete for four years. But at some point, you know, maybe his career is not going to be as long, or he's not going to be as explosive for as long. But there's no guy that could step in right away and just be your number one. Be your I I don't believe personally. I I mean, um, but you still draft one to potentially be number two, and maybe at some point they learn to be another number one. We still have Amari Rogers, who I was high on last year, but the way he couldn't catch punts, I know it's different than catching. Uh, footballs in the way that he couldn't work his way onto the 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 field um, like I thought he should have been able to last year is kind of concerning but he's in his second year so maybe he figures something out um, but draft a receiver sign a free agent like a Juju a Jarvis because I mean I imagine you could probably get them for under uh, you know 10 mil you might be able to pay them six seven eight because I don't think the market for them is uh, huge, but then again, Allen Robinson just did get fifteen million uh per year, but I think he's definitely uh head and shoulders above those guys I just named. And then I think really they the Packers front office need to start looking for receivers out there that they could potentially trade for. <clears throat> one that pops into my mind, um. The, the most obvious one to me would be Brandon Cooks, all right? Last year, the Houston Texans had a fire sale uh, at some point in the year when they realized, okay, we stink. You know, we have Deshaun Watson, our superstar quarterback. He's never going to play for us again. So they just started chipping guys out. And the one guy that they did not cut or trade was uh, Brandon Cooks. Again, they're a rebuilding team. So Brandon Cooks really doesn't fit the rebuilding mode. Don't know what he's getting paid, but I imagine it's probably 10, 11, 12 million per year, something like that, which would be half of what Devontae would have made if he signed. Because I'm from what the reports out there is that they offered him a similar contract, same contract, same money per year. I don't know if it was the same length, turned it down. Maybe he just really wanted to, to 
go to Vegas, just bought a house there, wanted to play with Derek Carr. Uh, they're like best friends. But still, I think it's a terrible decision for Devontae because he, he, <laughs> Derek Carr's good. He ain't, he ain't Aaron. He ain't Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, dude, good for Devontae. Go get $28 million a year or whatever. But Brandon Cooks, I think, would be the obvious trade. Uh, he'd be making, I think, probably around half of what Devontae would if he signed per year. So that allows you to sign another free agent, potentially, like a Jarvis uh, or a Juju or a Julio, and you could still draft someone uh, in the first or second round, preferably first round. We don't do that too often, but preferably whichever <laughs> receiver best on the board, please draft them, Packers. Um, but I think Cooks is the obvious trade. And then I was thinking about it. Maybe there are some, some teams uh, in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. The Panthers, Carolina Panthers just bowed out. So they're pretty much in rebuilding mode. Who's their quarterback? Maybe you send a feeler out there to see if you could potentially get DJ Moore. I think that would be a home run trade because um, you throw him. He, he puts up good numbers with like Sam Donald, Cam Newton. Uh, I think if you get him with Aaron Rodgers, I think DJ Moore, and he's still young, he's like 25, 26, so that would be one. I don't think that's super realistic, but that would be someone who they could potentially target, or at least I would. And then uh, off the beaten path, but potential, I mean, I, again, the Saints are another team that are in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes, so if they don't get Deshaun Watson, which I think they might be the favorite, but if they were to not get Deshaun Watson, I mean... Mike Thomas is out there. Uh, I'm not sure if he really wants to be there. I'm pretty sure he'd be open to a trade. Um, will they be willing to trade him? Don't know. But Mike Thomas would be one that I would look into as well. Because, you know, Mike Thomas, when he's healthy, is one of the best uh, in the league. He's not Devontae, but he's still one of the best. Uh, his contract is a little more. So if you ask me who I'd want between Cooks and Thomas... Cooks allows you to go sign another free agent. I feel like Michael Thomas is, at one point he was, when he got his contract, was the highest paid receiver. So I think he's probably making 17 or 18 a year, mill a year. So I think Cooks, uh, at, uh, and I don't know, I didn't look into the contract, but if he's at 10, 11, 12, he allows you to sign another free agent. So I would go with him first. I think he's the guy that the Packers need to target because I think the Houston Texans would be very willing to trade him. And... Yeah, maybe you work over the Packers a little more because they're desperate. But, I mean, Amari Cooper, who is just as good younger uh, than Brandon Cooks, just went for a fifth and a sixth-round pick. Now, again, the Packers just traded the best receiver in the league out of their franchise. So, uh, Houston Texans could probably play a little hardball. They might get, you know, you might have to give them a, a fifth, a fourth, something like that. But... Uh, I feel like they'd be willing to trade Brandon Cooks because they're in full rebuild. So I think that would be that would be the route to go. Try to get Brandon Cooks, sign another free agent, draft someone in the first round. I think that's what they need to do because you need a plethora of guys to replace Devontae Adams. Again, Devontae Adams was really, really good, and then the rest of the receivers were lackluster. So I think this year you lose Devontae Adams. You're not going to replace Devontae Adams, but I think if you have – you know, one, two, three guys that could get open. Because, again, Devontae Adams is the only guy that could get open. Valdez Scantling occasionally, once every three weeks, would get deep, have an 80-yard touchdown. Lazard would have, you know, two good games, four bad. Like, it was just, there was no consistency. So get three guys, give give Rodgers three options so he doesn't just have to lock in on one guy. You're not going to replace Devontae Adams. He's too good. You're not going to draft someone to replace him. You're, the free agents out there, you're not going to replace him with one guy. You need to get multiple guys. And then in that scenario, if you get a Jarvis, draft a rookie, um, you know, trade for a Brandon Cooks. All right, Randall Cobb's there. Doesn't need to be on the field too much. Now Lazard's like the three or the four. You can move him around. Like there's not pressure. Like I think that's a better role for him. But I think if I'm them and as a Packers fan, what I would like to see is them take that route and just get two or three guys, preferably trade for Cooks, sign a Jarvis, draft someone, and then see what we could do. Um, and then maybe even, I don't know what type of tight ends are out there, but I think they a uh, pass-catching tight end would be something uh, that they should look at too. But tough day to be a Packers fan. Uh, definitely right now it looks, it looks the prospects of Super Bowl are look just bleak. Need to see how free agency shakes out and the draft shakes out. So right now I don't think our chances are good, but 
That could change after I see free agency and the draft. If you're a Packers fan, let me know how devastated you are in the comments. And uh, let me know what you think the Packers should do, because I want to hear it. We're Packers. We're fans. We're, you know, ride or die community. So let me know what you think. Like the video. That would help. Uh, and subscribe. I'll probably make a Raiders perspective video at some point in the day. So thanks for watching. Uh, check out another video. Subscribe. Whatever you got to do. I'll catch you in the next one.